My father-in-law is a very avid photographer, loves birds, so we're gonna try to really attract some of that wildlife this winter and really capture the ice formations. And we're gonna install a Pro Air 60 and a 300 watt pond de-icer. And little man over there is eager to help. Job. You're such a good helper. We are going to build a pondless waterfall. The easiest way to learn something is to teach it. We are rocking and rolling on this pond. We appreciate you guys tuning in. What's going on DK Team Aquascape coming at you? It is the end of the season. It's a beautiful day out. It's roughly 50 degrees. Cold weather's been setting in here in Chicagoland. Jamie and I, Mr. Wawa himself, we're gonna win a rise of the pond, right? Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. Yep. You gonna be a good helper? Mm-hmm. Say, all right, let's do this. I'll hold it. You hold it? Uh-huh. Okay, you hold it. Say hi to everybody. Hi, everybody. Say, Aquascape lifestyle. Hi, lifestyle. Say everybody needs a pond in their life. Papa and wife. <laughs> Good job. All right, so I thought with the original pond build for my in-laws, we kind of left it where it was about 90% complete. So over the fishies, where's the fishies? Right there. It's like right there. So anyway, we thought it would be a great time to come back. Are you throwing rocks in the pond? Trouble. Todd's one. Yeah. So we thought it'd be a good opportunity to bring you back, show you a few of the tweaks and add-ons that I did to this pond. And what I'm gonna do to kind of winterize this thing for the winter, our plan is to continue to run it. My father-in-law is a very avid photographer, loves birds. So we're gonna try to really attract some of that wildlife this winter and really capture the ice formations. So we're gonna leave the biofalls running. We're gonna shut everything else down and we're gonna install a Pro Air 60 and a 300 watt pond de-icer. And little man over there is eager to help. Good job. You're such a good helper. So as you can see, I've got the three plug smart hub controller hooked up. I've got my SLD 4 to 7 plugged into that. I'm also gonna plug in the Pro Air 60 and the de-icer so that I can control it when the weather is nice. I can actually turn that de-icer on and off. I've got my smart thermometer and smart hub for my lights plugged into my 150 watt transformer. So everything's kind of laid out there. My plan is to actually build a panel and connect or hang all those controllers up there so everything's nice and neat. So that's something that I'm gonna work on yet this year, get that done. So I've got the SLD 4 to 7 on my smart plug, as you can see. So I'm actually going to turn that off, which you can see just turn the pump off. All that stuff's off now. So one of the things we kind of experimented with this year is I did not net this pond uh, thinking that it was far enough away from the trees we wouldn't get a lot of leaf uh, debris in it and we got some not too bad so I'll end up spending 10 minutes or so kind of going in there and clinging all of this leaf debris out so that that doesn't add to the extra decomposed layer through the winter and help also with the oxygen movement for the fish because this is a three foot deep pond over here in the steep end I've got 20 fish in here I've got about 17 trebunkin goldfish and three koi that are about six to eight inches. So it's a 600-ish gallon pond and it's a perfect size. It's a nine by 15. Jamie's doing his maintenance, checking the skimmer and adding leaves to it instead of removing leaves. But we'll let it slide because he's cute. So I got my five gallon bucket. I'm actually going to pull out some of this dead aquatic plants that were in here. And then I'm gonna work on getting some of these leaves pulled out of here as well. Then we will start winterizing. I'll eat one. You get one? Okay, you get one. Good job, you're a good helper.
You got time to lean, you got time to cling, right Jamie? So grab a broom. One of the things I'm gonna do as well is pull the skimmer mat out, the basket, and cling that out because it's got a lot of leaf debris. Dump that in my bucket so that I can continue to get a lot of that leaf debris up in suspension and draw it into the skimmer. And then I'll also get my net out and work on getting a lot of that heavy stuff out that I can't reach from the edge. I was doing some edge treatment. I ended up adding some of this stuff over here. Redid one of my edges because I ended up having just a small leak. I had a low edge right up in here. So I redid that, added some boulder work to help with that. We also ended up adding upper patio pond up there. Changed out the driftwood placement and really kind of dialed it in. We've gotten a lot of great enjoyment out of this thing this season. Looking forward to seeing this thing mature. We're gonna add some more plantings next year and just kind of keep adding and tweaking this thing. So we did turtle spitters. I got those dialed in as you can see in here. Right, plumbing them up into the actual spitter. Piped it up, added a ball valve, pull this out of here so that I could actually fill this as well. And then I added a three quarter inch threaded NPT, our auto fill line adapter for the faucet. And then I ran just our auto dust line, drilled through the turtle head on both of these. And now off of our four to seven SLD pump, that's over in the pond vault inside the pond, which feeds both patio ponds, the urn and both spitters. I can dial those in, throwing rocks again. He's trouble people, but he's cute trouble. So I also noticed that through the season, this turtle spitter, the foundation paint job on it is actually starting to split off from the weather so this winter I'm probably gonna end up having to bring that in uh, clean it up a little bit possibly repaint it for next season but the other one has a nice glazed finish and it's not having that problem at all so I'm excited to get that done and really enjoy this pond through the winter my helper is sleeping on the job come jump we're trying to winterize the pond okay we jump so as you can see, I've got a small layer of ice already forming right there. It's probably roughly an inch thick already, coming out about two thirds of the pond. So I'm gonna go ahead and stick the de-icer in there. Also get the Pro Air 60 so that we can keep the oxygen working in uh, throughout the winter. I'm actually going to pull the pump out of the pondless vault over there. So to do that, I need to pull that patio pond bowl, which actually is mounted to the lid of the patio pond. I did that so it's uh, simple and easy to maintenance. As you can see, I've got the Aquascape de-icer and then the Pro Air 60 kit. And the nice thing about that is it comes with two diffusers and the weighted tubing. So I'm going to actually set the pump over underneath the deck where the rest of my controls are, run that tubing out, drop the diffusers down in the pond, and the same with the de-icer. So you can definitely find all this stuff on our website and set it up at your own pond as well. So all you gotta do is put the splitter in, thread that on, just that simple. Comes with a couple hose clamps. We'll set that over underneath the deck, run the plumbing. Comes with the check valve, so you want to make sure that air output is going the right direction. And then hook it to your diffuser and you're good to go. So I'm going to put that in and run the cord. And then I will show you how I'm going to set it in there. As you can see, the red light is on, letting me know that it's plugged in and working. So I'm gonna actually set this. As you can see, I put the diffuser right into the weighted tubing. You can add that loose clamp, just twist it on, and set it in the water, out your line where you want. You got it down in there, and I'll go turn it on. I'll show you how we plug it into the pump. Got it plugged in, turn on the valve on the splitter, unkink my line. Sometimes when it's cold, you can either take a pair of pliers and kind of push on that, 
or take it inside, take a heat gun and kind of just warm it up ahead of time and you're good to go. As you can see there, I got both diffusers in there. I've also got the heater, which it's kind of hard to see here in the dark and I apologize, but that'll help agitate the water, add oxygen throughout the entire winter months. And then the de-icer will keep a hole open in the ice to let that oxygen exchange for the fish throughout the winter. So I really love these color changing lights on the smart control app. You can change it throughout the different colors you can set automations. You can even go into this part. As you can see, I've got it set for Christmas lights, red and green. So it'll dial through that red, a little bit of yellow into the green amber, and it really changes the look of this pond at night. And really in the season, this thing really comes into play. So like Greg says, you can enjoy this 365 days out of the year, and I'm looking forward to seeing how this thing transforms through the winter, starts creating ice formations so that we can enjoy this pond throughout the winter seasons. I'm excited to see down in there, next to the left of the turtle, how that'll stay open so that uh, birds that are around throughout the winter can actually get down there and drink from that and I think my father-in-law is going to be super excited to get some awesome photography through it as well. That was helpful. Apologize about the lighting. Kind of wrapped that up at the end of a work day in the dark. But I hope it was beneficial to show you just some simple end of the year winterization maintenance tips. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments. We'll be happy to answer. Keep liking, subscribing, and tell your friends. Definitely be seeing you on the next one.